Hmm. Well, I guess it's about time I get back into my YouTube videos. What do you think, Freya? Boba? Anybody? I'm sure they agree. It's just, the big problem is, I feel like I've hit such a dry spell in the Google Play Store lately. Oh, what is this? An envelope on the table, conveniently placed. I wonder how this fan mail got here. Definitely not staged. And it's even got an envelope inside it, so whoever wrote this must have not had any paper in their house. Who doesn't have paper in their house? What does this say? Do red bros, you lazy bastard, love ribbits. Who the hell is ribbits? Well, let's see what red bros is all about. <laughs> Hey y'all, Frog here, and yes, we've got a new Hidden Gems video. I know, I know. Hold your applause. Now what gem are we doing today, you might ask? Well, attentive viewer, we are doing Red Bros. What is Red Bros? Hmm, I'm glad you asked. Let's just get right into it. Red Bros is something a bit unique compared to most of the games I've played before. It's a bird's eye view much like Zelda and Pokemon is, where the premise is you go through different levels or dungeons in towers, collecting stars to level up to have the opportunity to move on to the next new tower unlock more skills such as more crew and magic slots. Your characters are little bowling pins with hands and a head, each categorized by their own clan and weapon. Okay, they're not really bowling pins, but they don't have legs or feet, so I guess they're more like the Miis in Wii Baseball, or Rayman if he lost his feet. Either way, the art works, so I'm not complaining. You collect these guys by chance of the daily spin or buying them from the shop and breaking them out of cages. Now that's a hell of a way to make friends. Imagine that being in real life, the only way to make friends is to break them out of cages or prisons and stuff. And that's a lot of cages. Who the hell's... Who the hell's putting all these people in cages anyway? That's never specified. I mean, it's not important, but still, like, it makes you wonder. On top of saving them, there's also the option to equip them with a hat to increase their stats. Leveling them up is done through either playing the game with them in your party or using one of four favorite items. Now, in terms of gameplay, this game controls entirely on touchscreen. Well, yeah, all these games are touchscreen, but... Yeah, that's not exactly what I mean. I'm saying there's no touchpad buttons or directions or anything as such. This game runs by tapping the screen to point your team in the direction you'd like to go. This is awesome, like pointing a red light for cats to chase. Everywhere you press, they will follow. Most collectibles are picked up automatically. The things that aren't automatic are scrolls and these statues, but anyone nearby picks these up. To use spells, you press and hold the icon and drag where you would like to move it to. Some spells deal damage, some health, some even teleport. The more you play the game, the more you'll know what each one does. Now there are tons and tons and tons of towers in this game. It's a mobile game. It's designed to never end, so I get that. This being said, there are only five different themes of towers, which is kind of small. Each have different enemies, different music, and different scenery. It makes defeating a tower all the more pleasant, because you know the next one you'll be at is unique compared to the last. Every tower has give or take five dungeons with three stars each that you can get. Unlike games like Angry Birds though, this game's stars aren't earned through a score, but rather through certain objectives for that dungeon. Sometimes it's beat the dungeon in two minutes or less, or kill enemies using traps like the spikes or fire pits. Other times you're busy saving pirates from these cages. Now, these pirates become temporary members for your crew to help you through that dungeon, should you keep them alive. If you feel lost or not sure what path to take if the room splits off, the magnifying glass here is used to zoom out. A really nice feature that often isn't used, but if it wasn't there when you need it, it'd surely be missed. It sucks that once you beat a dungeon, the pirates go away too, but I mean, I guess it's to keep you from being too powerful. Like, imagine going into a dungeon with 20 plus people with you at a time like that. You'd just, be, you'd just be too much. You'd be too much. If you really wanted to, though, you can actually buy pirates from the store in the game. They do cost real money, and I'm not about that life, but you can go ahead and do it. 
There's also a bunch of stuff on this HUD here, which, you know, is pretty common for mobile games, but still, like, let's talk about that. You get a daily login bonus through the little green dragon here. He shits out green gems, which are special currencies in the game. I always thought the sound he makes is just hilarious, and when I get bored, I can sit there for 10, 20 minutes just pressing on him. <laughs> They also give you a free spin on the gifts wheel every day, and even a free cage break in the character shop. I'm not gonna lie, this game offers a lot in daily content, which is good, it's what keeps you wanting to come back for more. It also has a heart system, which is your, your life counter, so every time you fail a dungeon you lose a life or a heart, and it takes time for it to come back. You have three hearts. So even if you do happen to expend one, you still have two more chances, and if you lose all three, you still want to come back and try to beat the dungeon again. It's that whole, next time I got it mentality, you know what I mean? Quick side note, this game is also really good on ads. You only get one every dungeon, which, you know, given how a dungeon can take five to ten minutes if you're, you know, taking your time with it, or if you're trying to go fast regardless, it still takes some time, so with the way the ads work, you really don't notice how often you get them, which speaks volumes in terms of how the app is put together. My biggest gripe with the game is the screen size itself. The game plays in portrait mode without any option to change the landscape should you wish. This means moving up and down the map is no problem. One press puts you where you're going. Left to right, however, you're constantly having to press on the screen because the edge of the screen is so close to where your group is. Imagine any game like that, where your play area is restricted to portrait style. Imagine running from a bullet bill in Mario, but you can only see two feet in front of you and behind you. How close is the bill? Where's the next hole? You don't know till it's too late. Now this game cries in giving you the option to either do landscape mode or you can judge the distance of the camera. Either option would be fine, and all I had to do was put an update out with that in there and it would be fine. But. Besides all of that, this is more of a personal thing, this game feels like it's just missing something. Like, it's got all this content, all this stuff that would make it a great game, but it just doesn't hold my interest. And I don't know what it is, someone else could play this and absolutely love it and be on it every single day, but personally, I just kind of lose interest in a good three or four days of playing this continuously. In conclusion, this game does a lot of things right. It's got good music, the artwork is nice, gameplay is pretty good, it keeps you interested for a time at least, for my case. Overall, with everything thought of, I would give this game a solid 4 out of 5. It's pretty damn good. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be working on doing this series a bit more frequently, like I was earlier this year. Honestly, I've been missing doing this. Uh, I can't promise when I'll do it, but I will say I'm trying to get back into the groove of this to where it'll be more regularly. If I sucked in the video, leave a comment down below to let me know how, so I can improve. If you liked it and have an idea what game I should do next, subscribe and leave it in the comments below as well.